This is Neville Smith. I'm here at the Central Florida Railroad Historical Society. And the only reason why I look back is because I knew that I was going to mess it up. <laughs> so I definitely read it. And I'm with Patrick Smith. He's going to give us a little tour and some knowledge about what's this um, part in history, what this did for Winter Garden and all that. Okay? So without further ado, here we go. Hold on. So this building that we're inside of is the Tavares and Gulf Railroad Depot and it was constructed in 1913. So this building's over 100 years old now. Mm -hmm. And it was actually the second Tavares and Gulf Depot for the city of Winter Garden. The first one burned in a fire in the late 1800s. So this is its replacement. And we're standing upstairs. This would have been the freight area of the depot. And the doors that are on the back wall there is where the trains would come up and unload and load freight on the railroad track that's still outside. Mm -hmm. Downstairs is the passenger station. That's where the waiting area was for passengers for the passenger trains. And the museum is filled with artifacts from all different walks of railroad life, all different railroads all across the country. But we do have a large collection of things from Central Florida in particular. Our dining car china collection is extensive. It's in the cabinets all along the walls from all different railroads all over the country. Possibly the largest collection in the southeastern U.S. And the rest of the building is filled with just every, everything you can think of railroad related. We have lanterns, we have uh, railroad signals, all kinds of different things like this. The clock on the wall there was from the original Orlando passenger station. And it was recently restored. It does function. We just haven't plugged it in yet. Gotcha. Awesome. We also have model railroad layout here that's representative of 1950s America. And some of the buildings on the layout were from an older one that we had downstairs that was actually constructed by a former member of ours who passed away several years ago. And it is all hand built from scratch. Awesome. On the back wall there you'll see a collection of railroad lanterns. Those ones in the top cabinet are all actually uh, switch stand lanterns. They were mounted on the top of the post where a railroad track switch was so that the crews could see which way the track was aligned in the door. Those are kerosene lanterns. They were fueled lanterns before we had electric power. Wow. So they had to be maintained. The shop crews would come out and add fuel back to them every once in a while. Wow. Awesome. And down underneath there is a collection of displays that show what uh, the inside of passenger cars or passenger trains were like. On your left is a cabinet that displays vintage railroad communication equipment, such as telegraphy and early railroad radios. And then over here, this is called a velocipede. This is an early hand-powered railroad car. And this was for one person. You sit on the seat here, and you would crank with your hands and your feet and you go back and forth like this, and you could get going pretty fast on that. And these were designed with all the weight on one side so that before the days of train orders and radio communication, mm -hmm. if you were stuck on the track and you saw a train coming, you could lift up this side of it and flip it off of the track like that uh, in a matter of seconds to get yourself out of home's way. Gotcha. And this one was again, fully restored by a member of our society. Very nice. This is a form of breezeway which means this area was not always enclosed. It was an open space that went between the end of the passenger and freight depot here, and then there was another structure here. So we had this enclosed so that we could turn it into two more exhibit space. Uh, there's more railroad china over here. We have a steam locomotive bell over here, which can be wrong. Wow. And then over on this side, is a handbrake wheel from a vintage diesel locomotive. This was inside the cab, and it works in much the same way as an emergency brake on your car. You would crank this wheel, and it turns a chain that is attached to a brake chute that clamps on the wheel of the locomotive so that it will not roll down the hill. Mm -hmm. We have a functioning railroad signal here. I believe this was from a subway system. That was recently installed. We just got that put on the wall and lit up in the last couple months. Okay. And over here is a collection of date nails, which is something that was attached to the railroad track at the time it was installed so that you could see the year that it was put in place. The year on top of the nail shows the year. Uh, 
And above that, we have uh, passenger train men's uniform buttons. These were attached to their shirts to show the railroad that they work for. And to the right of that are railroad switch keys. There's just so much on display in this museum. Uh, yes, there is. Almost all of it was donated to us by various people over the years. So almost all the collection was donated. This, this is, is definitely something that folks need to come to see, oh, not absolutely. just look at a video. Um, there is so much history yeah. on display in the museum. It's, it's almost mind-blowing yeah. how much of it's there if you just look around for it. Track tools all labeled for all of the different jobs and purposes they had on the railroad. That's also a recent display. We did that at the end of last year. And the cabinet under that shows uh, the evolution of railroad spikes, which are what was used to attach, still today is used to attach the railroad tracks themselves to the wooden ties underneath that holds them in place. And as you can see from right to left, they would got larger and heavier as the railroad track got heavier itself, as trains got longer and heavier. And then under the ties, or excuse me, under the spikes are cross sections of various ages of rail. Rail was measured in weight per yard, meaning a 135 pound rail would be 135 pounds for a three foot or one yard section. Wow. And it increased in size dramatically. Early rail was only 25 to 30 pounds per yard, and now the mainline standard is about 150 pounds. Wow. Yeah. In these caps. Here we have a display that shows on top is a Great Northern Railway conductor's cap. And then below that is New York, New Haven, and Hartford, colloquially known as just the New Haven, train man's hat, so a train crew. Uh, then a Long Island Railroad police helmet. And on the bottom is a pair of CSX hard hats. The bottom, the very bottom there is Seaboard Coastline, which is one of the railroads that merged into CSX. Awesome. The hard hats would mostly be used by line flight crews, so working on signals, mm -hmm. types of things like that. Last cabin over here, we have a very impressive collection of railroad switch keys and locks. The older ones towards the bottom, and then on top, more modern ones. One of the locks in the top of the cabinet, I think it's, there's so many that are similar. I believe it is the one, two, three, fourth one from the left, I actually found on the railroad tracks just outside my house. Wow. And it's like I was saying earlier, it's kind of amazing if you just know where to look. Yeah. Even if you go out and look in random places, you will find history. It's all around us, just buried by time and lost to lost time. Mm -hmm. This is our T&G gallery. There you go. Lots more stuff in here to see. This wall display shows monogram items for different railroads. Promotional items or giveaways, things that were given to crews. Let's see, we've got all kinds of stuff. There's pencils. Uh, these are ashtrays, different ones monogrammed for all the different railroads. A very impressive collection of those. over here, lots more promotional items, some calculators, Christmas ornaments, all kinds of different things that were branded from the different railroad companies. Here we have different signage and placards from inside and outside old passenger cars. interesting display we have here is that the pictures on the stands from left to right on the top of this display case show the history of this railroad depot building. Very, very early picture there shows the earliest known photo of the depot. That's the first one that we had here before it burned and was replaced by the current structure we're inside of now. The building in the background Behind the station in the third picture is the old power plant, Winter Garden's first power plant, which is unfortunately no longer there today. We got this building, I believe, 1983. The society itself was established in 1970, but before we acquired the building, we met in different places throughout Central Florida. So this is our permanent home. We're our society's home now. Awesome. 
really neat thing about our museum is we have a very large collection of historic photos from all over Central Florida that display a kind of moving history of railroading from near the start, near, near Florida's railroad inception up to the late 1960s. And they are categorized by city or area in the state. And over here we have family trees from the different railroads that merged into what would eventually become CSX, today's uh, railroad in Florida area. Awesome. It is absolutely amazing to me how many railroads there used to be, and over the decades and centuries, the mergers. So you started with hundreds of individual railroad companies, many of which were founded specifically to, to uh, get into a, a certain part of the state or to do logging, mining operations, things like that. Lots of very small railroads. And over time, they just merged and conglomerated until there's three or four major railroads throughout the country today. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, Patrick, I thank you very much for this tour, and I'm looking forward to seeing the folks come out and actually take a part and see the history of Winter Garden, the history of railroading in this area also, and Florida, because like you said, it represents everywhere here, so. It really is cool. I yeah. very would highly recommend a trip to the museum. There's just so much more to see than what I've touched on. Exactly. And uh, you could spend a whole day in the museum and still probably not see everything we have mm -hmm. on. Once again, thank you. And that's it for right now, guys. I'm here from England. Uh -huh. uh, and what they have done is gone home and they liked the museum so well that they brought presents back to us. So all the people have gone home and they have brought all these presents back except for that one sign. And they have blessed us with gifts from England uh, because they liked our museum so much. So this awesome. is all from England. Awesome. Except that one sign is from China. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome.